Hello everybody, today we're doing a video for GTA Car Kits in a 2016 Mini Cooper and today we're going to show you how to install our version 2 of our Apple CarPlay and Android Auto Kit. As you can see it's already installed on this car. The version 2 of our kit has less wiring, it's a smaller module, it's an improved resolution on this particular screen. There's no more extra microphone to install. The screen might flicker on you right now, but that's just the refresh rate of the camera. Interface can be controlled with original controls. You can switch easily to the original system. The rear view camera will still work the same way. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are supported wirelessly. And now we're going to go ahead and show you how to install it in this car. So the tools that you're going to need is a flathead screwdriver, a T20 Torx, a panel removal tool, and this is a hook tool, which is also part of the panel removal toolkit. And of course, you're gonna need our kit. So this is a 2016 Mini Cooper, and we already filmed another version for this car. So that one had the two clips uh, that you need to remove, but this car is a little different. So if your car has two clips, you would have to follow the old video. For this particular car, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna grab this and this ring and turn it to towards the driver and just remove it. You're gonna see here two T20s. So there is one right here and one right there and we're going to go ahead and remove them next we're going to take our panel removal tool and i'm going to get underneath and we're just going to remove this trim so it just held on clips you go ahead and unclip it next you're going to grab a flathead screwdriver and there's a slot in the middle here which you have to push down on on the clip and then kind of release it that will release the top clip Next we're going to remove the vents and in order to remove these two vents we're going to have to remove the two panels underneath them. So we're going to use our hook tool and you're going to carefully get behind here, behind this corner and pull it and then you can use your fingers and clip it. Here you go, so there's just clips, there's no bolts you need to remove. Next we're going to do the same on the driver's side. Once there's enough space, just use your fingers and remove this panel. Again, it just clips. Next, we're gonna remove the vents. So we'll start with this one. You're just gonna use your fingers and pull it out. Once it's out a little bit, you can use your fingers on the outer edge of the vents. Here you go. So there's four clips, two on top, two at the bottom. Now, same thing beside the driver. So now that we remove the vents and the bolts and release the top clip, you can carefully wiggle the screen out. And once you get to the back of it, we're gonna disconnect all the connections. There's one right here, one on the other side. And this one has the clip over here, over here, and the white one. This one, you just pull on it, it will come off. Then this one, you Press the clip in and then we're going to use our flathead screwdriver to get carefully underneath. Once it's out a little bit, you can just use your fingers to remove the connection. Now we're going to use our T20 and we're going to remove these two bolts. There's one right here and one over here. And if you remember our old video, we it was a little bit different, but the same concept. The radio is kind of the same. But if your car looks different, then please follow the old video. So at this point, you can grab on the harness and tilt the radio. So we're going to disconnect the connections from the stereo, all of them. This is the main one that you need to keep in mind. This is the video cable, which is going to connect to our module. And uh, the rest will just connect back. And then also, we're going to start removing this quad lock because it will also be replaced by our quad lock. And this particular car has a fiber optic cable, as you can see here. So we're going to use our hook tool and we're going to release this clip here so we can remove it because we're going to transfer over this connection to our own harness. So once you remove that, you're just going to continue on with removing all the other connections. So I'm going to press on the clips and start removing them. These ones have hidden clips right here. This one has this type of clip on the side. Then these ones, you have to first use your tool and lift up 
this little flap and then you press on the flap and that releases the clip everything is disconnected except for this video cable you can go ahead and remove the head unit so next you're gonna use your hand and get behind here and you're gonna just push the HVAC panel towards you and it will come off so I'm using my hand to push right here and you're just gonna rest it here because we're gonna be feeding some wires around there because that's where we're gonna hide the module there's nowhere else to hide it behind the stereo and we're just doing this so we don't have to remove the glove box like we did uh, before with our version one of the kit so now we're gonna show you what's inside our kit you're gonna find your main module which we're gonna hide then you have your main harness which connects to the quad lock so the original quad lock goes here and this one goes to the back of the stereo we're also gonna put in the fiber optic cable here next there is a USB connection which we're gonna wire and install in the glove box you also get a second video cable which looks similar to yours which we showed you earlier and then there's also the antenna which is used to help the signal for wireless uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto so the first cable that we're gonna install that comes in our kit would be this USB cable so we're gonna install in the glove box there is a fuse box cover here which you just undo then we're gonna stick this end and our goal is to catch it behind the stereo if you're struggling you can use something like a coat hanger I'm just gonna try to catch it with my fingers here here we go and at this point once you have enough length you can just close the glove box and then this cover is pretty loose around the edges so you can just cover this cable it will still lock and not look like it's out of place next we're gonna take our main harness to the module and our video cable which came in the kit so you're gonna see there's a straight edge and there's a 90 degree edge uh, so we're gonna use the straight edge right here so we're gonna put these cables over here so we end up with these three cables here so we're gonna connect them so they don't get lost on us so we're gonna first connect the main power harness then we're gonna connect this video cable and you're gonna match it to the blue one which says LVDS out and then there's also that USB which we just ran to the glove box which we're gonna connect on this end now we're gonna take the quad lock end of the harness and our goal is to bring it out right here same with this video cable because these two will connect this one will connect to the back of the screen and this one will connect to the head unit which we removed now we're gonna take the head unit which only has the video cable connected to it and this used to be plugged in at the back of your screen so we're gonna take it and plug it in to our LVDS inside and the last thing to connect to the module is the antenna so once you have everything connected to the module the last thing to check would be the dip switches before you hide the module so if your car has a smaller screen you would have all of them off and if you have a bigger screen like you saw in this car you would have number five on so it's pretty simple you would only do the number five and the rest you do not touch and at this point we're going to start hiding this module behind the dashboard having it here out of the way uh, the head unit can go back in place if it sticks out then there would be not enough space but as you can see we're able to do it and you're going to be able to do it also so now we're going to take the head unit and start putting it back remember this we never disconnected now it's connected to the module this video cable there's this fiber optic cable don't leave it behind because it tends to stay behind the bolts line up so at this point you can again tilt it back we're gonna start with connecting these antennas start from the furthest one away the pink one once you connect it you're just gonna lock it in place there's the white one again make sure to lock it in place after and the last one is the blue one then there's this connection another two right here 
then there's this. So the last thing that is left is the quad lock and the original fiber optic cable. So we'll take that fiber optic cable and take our harness and we will clip it in here on the outer edge. There you go. Then we're going to unlock the quad lock and insert it in. Once it's almost all the way in, you're going to lock it. We're going to take the original quad lock and connect it to our harness. Same thing. Has to be unlocked and then you lock it in. So now we're going to put back the two T20s that hold the stereo in place. So now you end up with having the squad lock here and we suggest to just push the wires through and there's enough space between here to stick, stick it here so it's not in the way of the screen when you're going to be putting everything back. So you just end up with a video cable for the screen and these extra wires which we're going to connect to it. So now we're going to connect the original screen back and we're just going to do these connections exactly the same way you remove them. Except now your video cable is not burgundy but is blue because that's the one that came with our kit but it connects the same as the original was connecting. Here you go. At this point we're gonna mount the screen back. You gotta make sure that no wires are in the way and you're just gonna clip it in on top and then you're gonna make sure to check that the two uh, holes for the bolts line up which they do and at this point we suggest to test everything you can also put this HVAC here loosely so in case you need to reconnect something in case something is not working so it's easier so we're gonna go ahead and test it so for testing we're just gonna turn on the ignition we're gonna choose the sound source in multimedia as auxiliary so auxiliary is gonna be your sound uh, source for CarPlay and Android Auto at this, at this point you're going to press and hold the back button in the center console. You're going to get this mode which you didn't have before. Now we're going to take our iPhone and the cable is connected to the USB there. Over here as you can see CarPlay is working so you're going to check the maps. The controls are working. We're going to go to our music. We'll check if Sirius is working. So as you can hear sound is playing so everything is good. So now we're gonna assemble the rest of this car so we're gonna take the HVAC panel and you're just gonna push it in. Now we're gonna put back the two T20s. Now we're gonna take this ring that goes around the screen and as you can see there's two pins that uh, are sticking out everywhere else it's just flat so that's the bottom of the ring so you're gonna insert it here and you're just gonna rotate it towards the passenger and now it's back in its place next is this plastic piece above the screen and on top of the dash so you just push it in make sure it clips in next are the vents simple you just insert them in now the trims that go underneath the vents they just clip in so you start closer to the door and move your way towards the screen and now it's all clipped in so at this point the installation is complete. Again, this was a video for GTA Car Kits in a Mini Cooper. I hope you liked it and we'll see you next time.